Yeah. 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 All of the information they are making today news, a firearm seized in the vicinity of Kisson Town, an alleged firearm seized and one taken into custody in St. James, a woman reportedly involved in Manchester double shooting, a bizarre murder of a woman. So welcome to Sky TV, my new viewers, how are you doing my subscribing family? Definitely feel free to drop a comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and like the video so it can be promoted to more law abiding citizens right across the beautiful country and the world itself. People may could get right into this. Sky News tell you how it really go. One SLR rifle was reportedly seized sometime last night by members of the security force in the area of St. Catherine North Division in the vicinity of Kisson Town in the parish where it was said that Laman reportedly was on an operation in the area when they reportedly find the firearm and three rounds of ammunition right there so you must know so that far past epic when you can't say the police them now try them best to reduce crime and violence so people were moving on again a alleged firearm was reportedly seized by the police them sometime last night future reported suggested that one person was reportedly arrested in connection with the seizure right there so in the vicinity of st james right there so people in a summer town any and every information reportedly pop up back on social media Definitely know so the viral boss have it right afoot for bring Kongi right in your ears. So people who moving on again. Listen to what Alex reportedly have to say about a woman that reportedly involved in Manchester double shooting. It's being reported that a woman was involved in Thursday's double shooting in Greenvale, Manchester, which claimed the life of 76-year-old Teddy Clark. The other man who was injured in the attack remains hospital at least. It was reported that about 5 p.m. a woman and two men went to a shop in an area known as Texas and posed as customers. They later opened gunfire on a man as he approached the establishment. Mr. Clark was also shot and died at the scene. Investigators believe Mr. Clark was not the intended target. The three attackers escaped in a vehicle, sending you back over to the viral boss. Some wonderful viewers and my nice clean subscribing family, let me know your thoughts and your input down below. If you love information, you're definitely in the right place to get all of the latest info of what is really taking place right across the beautiful island. Sky News, tell you how it really go. So people are moving on to the next topic now. Listen to what Alex reportedly have to say about a bizarre murder of a woman. Multiple gunshot wounds, a slashed throat and plucked out eyes that's the last image a 54-year-old father now has of his daughter after police described to him the state of her body which was found in bushes last Thursday. The woman, 30-year-old Leona Kimmy Thomas, a driver employed to Grace Kennedy Limited, was killed early Wednesday morning while making deliveries in close proximity to her home in Windsor Heights, off Windsor Road in St. Catherine. Strangely, it is an incident that remains low-keyed. As far as reportage goes, me sigh on sleep. Every time my eyes shut, it come like a shimia see. Me a jump up out of me sleep. Eh, the police dem tell me, me and my son. We went down to the station and talked to them. Her throat slashed and her eyes dem dig out and she get shot. And dem throw. Har in a bush, the distressed man told the Jamaica Observer. Me have the blood pressure and sugar, and me no want it lick me down. Me feel weak. Me no 100 right now. Me under pressure right now. A two night now me no sleep. Me head a hurt me he continued. Thomas's body was found along Washington Drive in Windsor Heights. While being informed about the state of his daughter's body, the man told the Sunday Observer that police officers had to console him. The police dem halfy hold on PON me. Me no no. Something wrong, he said. Police sources from the St. Catherine South Police Division told the Sunday Observer that it seems Thomas didn't make it home on Wednesday morning. The truck she was driving was discovered, stripped of all the goods on the main road. This was a little distance away from where her body was dumped. Since the start of the year, 15 murders and 18 shootings were recorded in the division. Thomas's younger brother said he doesn't know how to respond. At this moment, I don't even know what to say, to be honest. She's a girl that I'm sure na go trouble nobody. She is jovial and stuff like that. I don't know what to say he told the Sunday Observer. Moreover, 
He inquired as to why the family hasn't been able to identify her body as yet. The police said they are doing an investigation and then we will be able to identify the body. How long does it take for them to do their investigations? He questioned. Devastatingly, the father said he found out about his daughter's murder a day later in the most heartbreaking way. His phone rang Thursday evening and he answered. A family member then asked him, a true S.E.H. Kimmy dead, hitting him off guard and sending him into a wave of emotions. Way you mean Kimmy dead, he responded staggeringly. He said that was what spurred him to engage the police. The man told the Sunday Observer that when police officers took him and his son to Thomas's home, the front door was locked. Her roommate was then alerted and she gave them access to the house. Inside, they discovered that a washing machine was stolen from the house, along with chicken that was left in the refrigerator and other items. It is suspected that criminals gained access to the house after taking a key from her body, and after rummaging through the house, they locked the door and left with the key. Late Friday night, Thomas's roommate was accompanied by guardsmen personnel to the area to collect her belongings to go elsewhere because the home was deemed unsafe as investigations continue. The woman, who was referred to as Thomas's sister, told the Sunday Observer, We were living together. I don't know anything. The police don't give us no information and them no talk to we all now. They said they would call us and we are waiting on the call. Before she could continue, she broke down and said she couldn't speak on the incident anymore. Thomas's aunt told the Sunday Observer that she was distraught. Up to Saturday night when contacted, she said she was unable to fathom what had happened. She supposed to do a delivery she said. I honestly don't remember the last time I talked to her. Me head Sion recall nothing. Now, I am out of it meanwhile, Thomas's father is adamant that his daughter was set up a some funny play Iguan. She not even reach her yard and dem kill her and throw her in a bush. It looked tricky. Don Webby, Group Chief Executive Officer of Grace Kennedy Limited, told the Sunday Observer on Saturday that the company is deeply hurt by the loss. We are extremely sorry and broken hearted, and we have our security people really doing a proper investigation. We are very distraught and sad. We are extremely concerned. It is a very sad moment for us he said. I was in a meeting when I heard that one of our truck drivers was killed somewhere in Central Village, and the goods stolen from the truck. I am really concerned about it Webby said there are some sensitive issues that can't be discussed regarding the incident. However, he said, all our trucks have panic buttons on them and it is not clear to us at this time whether the panic button was pressed or not, which is a big issue for us subscribe because we make your life easier thank you see you on the next